Welcome to this painting tutorial. How's it going everyone? Welcome to this video. In this video I'm going to show you how I painted this Veiled Path Harley Quinn for Warhammer 40k. I saw this color scheme on the Kill Team Faction Focus for Harlequins and I liked it so much how they looked that I wanted to paint my Harlequin Kill Team like them. And I decided to also upload the video. Green and yellow are difficult colors to paint because the pigment on these paints isn't usually very strong and they require more coats than usual. And this model has both of those colors. But with a little patience, I think this color scheme is nice and very visually striking. You can mix and match the areas of color to create your own unique harlequins too using the same colors. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will get started. I'm going to start by priming the model in grey. For that I'm going to use Vallejo Surface Primer Grey through an airbrush and you can use any other primer that you want. I would recommend using a light grey or white. This is going to help us cover with those greens and yellows because those are going to be the colors that are going to be more difficult to cover and this uh, primer is going to help us with that. I'm going to start blocking all of the colors of this Harlequin and I'm going to start with Warpstone Glow. This is going to be like a medium green and I'm going to start using this on the areas of the model that I want to paint the Harlequin pattern. If you don't want to paint the pattern you can just leave them this color like medium green and it's going to be look very good. Uh, but uh, as I said this color is kind of difficult to cover so it's going to take multiple coats. I'm going to have to paint this uh, thin down color into all of the areas that I want to paint this color and then wait for it to dry and then apply a second coat, let it dry, ap apply a third coat and I think I was happy until the fourth or five coat. With this colors you need to keep applying layers until you can't see anymore the color underneath because these colors don't cover very well as I said and just make sure to apply it thin and apply multiple coats. Next I'm going to apply the dark green and for that I'm going to use Caliban green and this is going to alternate between the legs and the arms. I'm going to use the right arm and the left leg with this color and leaving the others on the medium green. As they should, these colors are thinned down with a little bit of water so that they flow easily and they don't cover detail. Also, uh, most of these colors need uh, more than a couple coats. Uh, just to make sure that the opacity, the full opacity is reached. Next I'm going to use uh, Vallejo model color black and with this color I'm going to paint the gloves and the places underneath the mask, on the suit places on the head and uh, that's it. Um, I didn't paint the gloves just yet because I thought they would be uh, skin but now I'm going to paint them black too. Once it's done, I'm going to paint the light green and if you did a clean job with the other colors, this should cover very easily over the gray primer and this is going to go over the rest of the suit that you want to be light green. You can, remember, you can switch it around. You don't have to paint these areas as I'm doing. You can just switch them around to make each of your Harlequins unique and in Kill Team, they're going to be needing to uh, look different uh, from one another. This color doesn't cover very well like the other greens, but it covers fairly well. I think you can get away with just uh, applying three coats and it'll uh, the opacity is going to be reached fully, mostly. Just be careful, don't apply it very thick uh, because that could leave marks or brush strokes. Once that's done, I'm going to paint the yellow and for that I'm going to start with a base coat of Averland Sunset and this is going to go over the hair and over the ribbons and places like that. You can paint other places yellow if you want. For this model I decided just to do those two areas but you could paint the gloves or any other areas that you want to be yellow and this is going to go over all of these places and it's going to cover fairly well because it's a base color. Uh, but applying a second coat, coat won't hurt. Next I'm going to use a purple. For that I'm going to use Nagarot Night. And this is going to just paint a little bit of detail on the hair. I'm going to paint some areas of the hair on this color. This is a good contrast 
both in tone and in light uh, so that it contrasts with the hair of this model and I'm just going to paint those uh, triangles on the hair just to make a little bit of a pattern on the mohawk. Next I'm going to use Balthazar Gold and with this color I'm going to paint most of the rest of the areas of this model. I'm going to paint the mask, the belt, the pieces of armor and the weapons. I think that these models they look like a little bit like wood elves or like elves from Lord of the Rings where they use a lot of greens and earthy tones uh, and uh, like them these don't use a lot of silver so you if you keep the silver at a minimum they will look pretty good i think or that's what i'm going for uh, you can change it if you want but i think that's uh, the idea of this color scheme anything that is metallic is going to be more likely brass and not uh, silver Next I'm going to paint silver and for that I'm going to use lead belcher and this is going to be kept to a minimum, just the handle of the gun and a couple details here and there on the backpack and that's going to be it. Uh, you can use it in other areas if you want but I would recommend keeping it to a minimum. Next I'm going to use Celestra Grey to paint the little fasteners that it has on the suit on the left side. And you could also use this color to paint the mask if you wanted to keep it white and then give it a, a wash and then also in gray to to bring up the highlights and then white on the very edges uh, but for this model it's just going to be this area here and that's it and with that done we're done with the base coat so I'm going to start washing this model for that I'm going to use build tan green and this is going to go over all of the green areas but on the lighter green and the medium green I'm going to just apply it on the very uh, edges on the very recesses with a small detail brush and on the big areas such as the dark green the, the Caliban green I'm going to apply it all over as an all over wash and that's going to be it for this uh, just make sure not to paint on the yellows or any other areas that don't need to be green because uh, you ha you'll have to clean it up if you stain them with this color. Once that's done, I'm going to use Seraphim Sepia and this I'm going to use it on all of the areas that are going to be yellow. I'm going to let it sit on the recesses of the hair and on the little thing on the neck that is yellow too. On the ribbon on the back, you don't really need to paint it unless it has very prominent recesses. You can uh, just apply it on those areas with a small layer brush and that's going to be it for that. Next I'm going to use Agrax Earthshade and this is going to go over all of the brass or gold details around the model and this is going to be well the mask and the armor pieces, the belt and stuff like that. Uh, just make sure to give it a good wash and that it set settles on the recesses and not paint over any other areas that you've already painted. And once that's done, I'm going to use Nolan Oil and this is going to go over only the silver details. And with that done, all of the colors are base coat and painted and the model can be used as a tabletop standard and this is going to good, look very good. But as usual, I'm going to keep going and I'm going to start uh, painting all of those highlights and making it look a little bit better. The first thing I'm going to do before highlighting, I'm going to create the pattern on the legs with a little bit of black paint. I'm going to thin it down so that it's of a consistency like ink and I'm going to use a brush. You can use a micro pen if you want, if you have one of, like that and you're more comfortable, comfortable using a pen, that'll be a lot easier I think. I did that on my previous Harley Quinn video if you want to follow that. But this time I, uh, I attempted to do it with a brush and it needs to be very thin and, it, and the brush needs to be very sharp. For that you can twist it and pull it on your palette to create a very fine tip and start, and start uh, creating these lines. You're going to start with a diagonal and go all around the, the thigh in this case or the limb that you're trying to paint the Harlequin uh, pattern on. And then you can do parallel lines on the sides and keep going uh, doing parallel lines to that initial one 
and then do one that intersects that as a uh, perpendicular and do the same thing in the other direction. And that'll be it to create the pattern. You don't really need to be very neat. You can clean it up afterwards when you're applying the other colors or you can uh, change your mind and uh, move it around just cleaning up with other colors as you do this. Uh, and it doesn't need to be perfect. If you have some um, Harlequin pattern, if you have some Harlequins that look a little bit odd, you can explain that by just saying that the fabric is stretched in a weird way in that area. It's, it's, it's totally fine. Once I have the Harlequin pattern set, I'm going to start filling it in. And for that, I'm going to use Averland Sunset. And this pattern is going to be difficult for me to explain. But if I can, I could explain it like uh, something. You can say that uh, one of the diamonds is going to be yellow. And the ones that are on the vertices are going to be black. And the ones on the sides, on the, on the lines, they are going to be green. So it's three colors on this pattern. And if you look at it horizontally, it's gonna be it's gonna be one black, one yellow, one black, one yellow, and the ones on um, that are in between are going to be green, and then the next row is going to be repeat that, but alternating the sides so that the yellow is not underneath the other yellow, it's going to be underneath the black instead. And it's a little bit complicated, but if you pay attention to the way I painted it, maybe you'll uh, get it a little bit better just for, for watching the pattern itself. And uh, yeah, that's it. I'm filling these areas with black and the middle one is yellow and I'm going to be repeating that pattern uh, all over this model. Once it's done, the Harlequin pattern is going to look like this. You don't really need to do this Harlequin pattern if you don't want. There's other uh, ways you could do it. You can use two colors instead or more colors, I don't know, but uh, after this is done, I'm going to go over and highlight the lighter green with O green camo. This is only going to go over the sharpest edges of this area. I'm not going to paint any more greens on these, Just I'm, I'm just painting highlights. And for that, I'm going to use the edge of my brush and I'm going to go over all of the edges of the cloak and the uniform uh, light green that I'm using. Next, I'm going to use Warpstone Glow again. And with this color, I'm going to edge highlight all of the sharpest edges on the darker green. These aren't going to be very evident, but I'm going to go over all of the muscles on the sharpest edges of them, just to make them pop out a little bit and give them a little bit of uh, three-dimensionality so they, they're not just this void green, uh, darker green with no detail. I'm just going to go over all of these edges and make them pop a little bit with this color. Next I'm going to highlight the black and for that I'm going to use Eshin Grey. And with this color I'm going to highlight the gloves and also the Harlequin pattern on the leg and arm. I'm going to just make a couple lines on the Harlequins on the top parts like a V shape. On the two edges that are facing up on both the hand and the leg and on the on the gloves or on the other the rest of the black areas i'm just going to try to pick the sharpest edges and make them uh three-dimensional with a little bit of a highlight with this color next i'm going to give a second highlight to the black with downstone and this is going to go over the very sharpest edges on the gloves and on the very top of the harlequin on the legs and just on the very top that is facing up just a little dot on that edge and that's going to be it once it's done i'm going to use ushapti bone and with this color i'm going to highlight all of the yellow areas all of those edges on the ribbon that is flow flowing behind the harlequin and on the hair on all of the edges i'm going to use this color as an edge highlight and it's going to look a little bit pale, but a little bit too much like bone and not very yellow. Uh, but after this is done, I'm going to apply a glaze. On the Harlequins, I'm going to pick the two uh, edges that are facing up of the Harlequin pattern. And that's going to be it for the yellow. Next, I'm going to start highlighting the bronze. And for that, I'm going to use a bright bronze. Is, that, is it bronze or brass? I don't know, but this color is very nice. It's very beautiful. This is game color 
bright bronze from Vallejo and this is going to be over all of the edges of the brass color of the armor. Uh, you don't really need to cover the whole area uh, but you can use this a little bit on the very top parts to make uh, places like in the masks uh, shine a little bit more. Uh, but concentrating on just the edges of these areas and it's going to look very nice and very bright. Once it's done, I'm going to bring back the yellow with a little bit of Lamenter's yellow. And this is going to go uh, as a glaze over the whole area of yellow that we painted before. This is going to unify those uh, bone colors and the yellow and it's going to look a lot more like yellow and it's going to look a lot more vibrant and nice so um, that's what I'm going to do just apply it all over the area not as a wash but as a tint that is going to shift the colors and make them look more yellow once it's done I'm going to keep going and I'm going to use Stormhost Silver and with this I'm going to highlight the places that are going to be silver which aren't very many it's just the handle of the gun and uh, some details here and there on the backpack some tubes and stuff like that and that's going to be it next for the fasteners of the uniform I'm going to just use Vallejo model color white and this is going to go over the edges only the edges of these areas uh, I don't really need to go through the trouble of using Ulthan gray and then white because uh, they're very small they don't matter that much I'm just going to pick the edges and that's going to be it Next, just a couple more areas to finish this paint job. I'm going to start by highlighting the purple. For that, I'm going to use Ceres Purple. This is going to go over all of the edges of the hair, just the hair strands that are popping up. And uh, that's it. Uh, like with the yellow, I'm just going to pick these with my, uh, my small layer brush. And I'm going to go over all of this area like that. To finish up the effect, I'm going to use Demonet Hide and this is going to go over only the sharpest edges of the purple, the very top parts of the mohawk, and that's going to be it, really. And to finish up the model, I'm going to paint the gem on the belt as a blue-green. For that, I'm going to start with this base of Stegadon Scale Green, and I'm going to cover the whole jewel with this color. I'm going to next start highlighting with a little bit of Sotek green and with this color I'm going to do like a U shape on the bottom part of the jewel covering like half of it and leaving a little bit of leaving the edges on the darker color uh, but doing a little bit of a highlight with this color as you can see here. Next I'm going to use Temple Guard blue and with this color I'm going to just pick a small highlight on the very bottom part of the jewel just a little U shape on the, underneath the previous one that we did leaving the edges and the recesses on the previous color don't try to paint all the way to the recess just paint a little bit of a U tiny U shape on the on the underside of the previous highlight that we did and once it's done I'm going to finish the paint job with just a little dot of white with Vallejo model color white that is going to go on top of the jewel that is going to be like a reflection of light that is going to make it look a lot more realistic and that's going to be it for this video and this is the finished model i have to say i had a lot of fun painting this model i really really liked it i kind of fell in love with the color scheme once i saw them on that article of the kill team faction focus for harley queens i really really liked them i really at the moment, I don't know the rules for the bailed path on Elites or on Warhammer 40k. I just know that I like this color scheme a lot and I hope you do too. I wanted to paint my whole kill team like this and I decided to make a video too. So that's it. Thank you very much for watching this video. And if you liked it, please like the video, comment on it and subscribe to the channel to see more videos in the future. Please leave suggestions or things that you would like uh, me to paint or show in the future. And that's going to be it. I hope you enjoyed it and found it entertaining and helpful. And I'll see you on the next video. Thank you very much for watching.
You stayed. Great. Thank you very much for supporting my channel. And if you would like to become a patron, there is a link to my Patreon page in the description below. Your contributions help pay for my work and keeps the channel going. A single dollar a month is more than enough and you can cancel it at any time. If you can't, don't worry. You can support my channel by simply watching my videos and sharing them with your friends. Thank you for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you.